This video introduces how to use the WaveShare HDMI screen. The tutorial for using the HDMI screen. Working with PC. Please prepare the above materials. Connect the touch interface of the screen to the USB connector of the PC. After a while, Windows will automatically recognize the touch function. If using HDMI communication, connect the screen's HDMI interface to the PC's HDMI interface. After waiting for about 5 seconds, the screen should display normally. Enter the system's control panel, type and click on calibrate the screen for pin or touch input in the search bar. In the popped tablet PC settings interface, click on setup. Text prompts will appear on the screen. Press the enter key to switch to the seven inch touch screen and click, and then the touch screen is successfully specified. Prepare the above materials. First, write the Raspberry Pi image to the TF card. Open the Raspberry Pi official website, select computer, choose software. Select the Windows version for download. If using a Mac computer, download the Mac OS version. Follow the prompts for installation. The installation process won't be demonstrated here. Connect the TF card to the computer via card reader. Open the Raspberry Pi imager software. Choose the system with a default desktop and select the TF card. Check set hostname. Set the hostname according to your preference. Check set username and password. For the username, enter the desired username. For the password, enter the desired login password. Check configure Wi-Fi. Enter your Wi-Fi name for the hotspot name. Enter your Wi-Fi password. Select the Wi-Fi country. Since I'm currently in China, I choose CN. For language settings, select Asia and Shanghai. Click save and then begin the burning process. For Buster or other systems, manual resolution settings are required. Start by opening the WaveShare website and search for the corresponding product model. Find the wiki link and open it. Scroll to the config.txt modification section. Connect the TF card to your computer. Following the instructions provided, open the config.txt file in the root directory of the TF card and add the corresponding code at the end of the file. To prevent errors, it's best to copy and paste directly. Once pasted, save and safely eject the TF card. Insert the TF card into the Raspberry Pi card slot. Connect the screen's touch interface to the USB connector on the Raspberry Pi. Connect the HDMI cable to the HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi. The HDMI cable requires an HDMI female to micro HDMI male connector for the Raspberry Pi. For Pi 3, just use the standard HDMI cable. For Pi 0 or Pi 0 2W, you'll need a mini HDMI to HDMI connector and a micro USB ODG cable. Power on the Raspberry Pi and wait for a few seconds for it to display correctly. Next, let me show you how to specify the screen when the Raspberry Pi is connected to two screens. This is the effect that the touch is wrong before specifying the corresponding touch screen. Open VNC, as we have obtained the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and the VNC function is enabled. We can directly input the IP and log in using the default account and password for the Raspberry Pi. The usage of VNC can be found in our wiki. In the Raspberry Pi terminal, enter ZRAND to view the HDMI ID of the primary screen. Input ZINPUT in the Raspberry Pi terminal to view the touch ID of the primary screen. If there are two touch IDs and you're unsure which one is the primary screen, you can try both to determine the correct one. Running the command. After checking the corresponding ID, you can run the commands to designate the touch to the respective screens. Here, the identified touch IDs are 7 and 6, so adjustments need to be made accordingly. Since entering this command each time after booting is inconvenient, you can add it to the startup process. Add this command. Remember to change it to your IDs. After restarting, You'll notice the touch calibration is applied to the specified touch screens. Prepare the above material. When working with Jetson Nano, the software configuration is not required. 
Connect the touch interface of the screen to the USB connector of the Jetson Nano. Connect the HDMI interface of the screen to the HDMI interface of the Jetson Nano. Then, power on the Jetson Nano. After waiting about 5 seconds, the screen should display correctly. For audio output, you can use the 3.5mm headphone jack connected to the HP audio output interface.